Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, uh, and welcome to this video about Kirchhoff's laws. So today we're going to introduce these laws, um, when we'd use them, and the two laws, the current law and the voltage law. So if you've just got a simple circuit like this with a supply voltage and uh, one component, you can deal with that, and you can usually just deal with that with uh, Ohm's law. Uh, if we wanted you to calculate anything, you could just use that and, and you'd be happy. However, let's say that I asked you to model a power station in a house. So the power station is the voltage supply, and let's pretend the house, we just model it as a resistor. It's a simple circuit. But in real life, we know that there's you know, more than one house connected to a um, power station. So if we put a second house in, it's a second resistor. And then we add a third house as well. But however, this third house has solar panels. So it has its own supply voltage. This is when our resistors get more complicated. And Kirchhoff's law is useful for these complicated circuits. In fact, I would say when you see some sort of circuit with a second voltage source or more, that's when you should start thinking about using Kirchhoff's laws. They can be used whenever, and I'm going to show you a very simple circuit soon, um, but they make it easier to solve more complicated problems. So the two laws, the current law and the voltage law, let's look at the current law first. The current law deals with um, looking at a junction. So a junction is like this point here, where a, a wire splits into two, into two branches. And at that junction, the law says that the current into the junction um, becomes the current out of the junction. Right? So in this case, I can see my current going in as I've called I1, and then it splits into I2 and I3. Now, another way of thinking about this is this is just conservation of charge, right? The current is just electrons flowing. Electrons flow into the junction. You have to have the same amount going in that go out. You can't have electrons disappearing in the middle of the junction, and they can't just um, come from nowhere and have more coming out than come in. So this is just it's basically counting to make sure the same amount of electrons are going in that's coming out of a junction. That's the first law. Pretty easy one. So as an example, let's say we had 0.3 amps coming in, and we knew one of the ones coming out was 0.1, uh, then the, the missing one has to be uh, 0.2, because 0.2 plus 0.1 has to equal 0.3. The voltage law is that the voltage around a loop is zero. So first of all, we're going to figure out uh, what do we mean um, by voltage. We remember last year voltage uh, is, is defined as the energy in each coulomb of charge. And so when you look at a, a loop and making sure that the, um, the energy around the loop is zero, basically what you're saying is that there's the same amount of energy created as destroyed uh, or that energy is, is conserved. Um, and let's look at this using an example, a very, very simple example. So the voltage around a loop is zero. What is a loop? Um, a loop is what you choose it to be. And so in this case, there's actually quite a few loops you could choose. You could just choose the one on the left. Um, you could choose this as the loop. It doesn't necessarily have to have you know, a voltage source in it. It could be any loop there. It still follows the rules. This could be a loop. So it looks like we're, we're missing out one of the branches, but we still have a loop. This could be a loop. Um, we could pick a loop on this side, and there's a number of loops we could pick. So let's just say we're um, picking this loop here. It's a very, very simple loop. There's some sub-rules to this Kirchhoff's voltage law you've got to make sure you follow no matter what loop you've picked. Um, and they are, you, you kind of walk around the loop, so you pretend you're an electron going around the loop. Um, the current, the correct way through a battery, and the correct way through a battery is following uh, the current, um, is you get a positive value, and following the current through a resistor, you get a negative value. Um, and then you can use V equals IR. So you, you think of, oh, there's a few sub rules here, hang on a second. You'll see these in an example and, and you'll see that it kind of makes sense. So here's a little example. Let's say we have a voltage source of 9 volts, we've got a current of 0.1 and we have some unknown resistor. Let's follow all of these steps. So we walk around the loop. So to walk around the loop we need to start somewhere. So this red point is where we're starting from. And let's go this way. So as we get to the battery we realise, okay, we are going through the battery the same way that the current does. Because the current comes out of the positive, it goes right around the circuit, back into the negative, right? So because we're going the correct way through a battery, we've got a positive 9 volts. We keep going around the loop until we hit the next component, which is a resistor. And we are following that current. We're going the same direction as the current through the resistor. So it's negative. So it's negative the voltage through that's, that's been um, dropped over that resistor. 
keep going around, we get back to where we started, so we've done a loop, and the rule is the voltage around the loop is zero, so we can say that equals zero. We also know that V equals IR, so we can actually replace this unknown voltage with its current times its resistance. So we just substitute that in, it's exactly the same equation, but instead of VA we've got its current, remember it's still minus, times its resistance. We rearrange that equation, so we put negative 0.1 times R on the other side of the equal sign, and then we can divide both sides by 0.1, and we get the resistance of 90 ohms. Okay, so that's a simple circuit you could have worked out with V equals IR anyway, but I'm just showing you how to use these rules. What if you walk the other way around the loop? Okay, well let's start at the same place and we'll go the other direction. So now we're going through this component, but we're going the opposite way to the current. See, the current's going down and we're going up. So instead of we're following the current through the resistor, it's going to be positive because we're doing the opposite of the rule. We keep going around until we hit the battery, and now we're going through a battery the wrong way, right? Current comes out of the positive, but we're going into the positive. So that's negative 9 volts. And we're back to where we started. Current around the loop, uh, sorry, voltage around a loop is zero. We can do our same um, substitution for our unknown voltage, put IR in there, and we get this. We can add 9 volts to both sides, and we get the same place we were before, divide by 0.1, we get exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter which way you choose, as long as you follow the rules. So we've met two laws here of the Kirchhoff's laws. The first is uh, the current law, which is current in a junction is current out of a junction, which really is conservation of charge. And the voltage law, which is really conservation of energy, um, is that voltage around the loop is zero. And there's some sub rules you need to follow. So in the next video, what we're going to do is look at uh, an NCA question uh, to solve this in real life using both of these sort of in conjunction um, to get a, uh, an answer in a, in a decently complicated circuit.